Okay, so today we're going to cover section 1-6. It's the last section of chapter 1. Today we're going to describe angle pair relations, relationships. Now, this lesson is really important. You're going to be using this information a lot throughout the course. It's also nice SAT questions. So just be familiar with the content in this lesson. So the first three um, angle relationships we're going to talk about, and you've probably heard the first two back in probably elementary or middle school, you've probably heard about complementary and supplementary angles. Now, the key word here for complementary and supplementary is that it must be only two angles whose measure um, sum up to be 90 when they're complementary, and then two angles when you add them or sum to 180. When you have two angles that are adjacent, those are gonna be two angles that are next to each other. So they're gonna share a common vertex and a common side, but they would not have any common interior points. So they're not gonna overlap. So down at the bottom, we've got some examples of complementary angles. Now, when they ask you to identify complementary angles or supplementary, they don't have to be adjacent. All we're looking for is a pair of angles that when you add them, when they're complementary, they need to add up to be 90. When they're supplementary, they're going to be two angles that when you add them, they equal 180. So for example, in this picture, notice the little right angle box. So this is gonna tell me that angles one and two are gonna add up to be 90 degrees. Now, they may give you numbers on them, and they would show that maybe this one's 20, and then this one could be 70, and we know that 20 plus 70 equals 90. So this would be an example of a pair of complementary angles because when I added their angle measures, it adds to 90. Now, they don't have to be adjacent. They could be separated. So these could also be complements and let's say this one's 30 and this one's 60, as long as when you find two angles and you add them, if their angle measures add to 90, then they're complements. When we have supplementary angles, and again, they can be adjacent, like angles five and six here, or non-adjacent, as long as their um, sum is 180, then they're considered supplements. So for example here, if this is 120, angle five, then if I label angle six as 60, if I go back and add those two angle measures, you can see that they add to 180, which would make those a pair of supplementary angles. Generally, whenever you see a straight line, which is a straight angle, and if it's divided into two angles, say one and two, these are always gonna be supplements. We're also gonna learn um, that they're called a linear pair. But for now, all we're looking is to find two angles. When I add them, if they add to be 180, they're supplements. If they add to 90, they're complements. So this one, let's say this one's 110, and then this one could be 70. And again, you can check it and find that seven and eight would be supplements as well. Now, if you're struggling to keep track of which one is which, um, a, little, a couple little tricks um, that might help you to remember. Um, sometimes I think about saying the alphabet, and if you wanted to come here and the letter C in the alphabet as you're saying it, and then here we would go L, M, N, O-P-Q-R-S, and then here, this would be supplement. I also think of this as being like a number line, like if we were counting up, 90 would come before 180, so I would associate C with being like a smaller letter than that because it would be associated with 90 on a number line, uh, but whatever tricks. Another thing that I do sometimes is I take the word complementary, so if I just start to write the word all I'm gonna do here is add a little line here, and now it looks like I've just made this into a 90. Um, whatever tricks are gonna help you. 
For supplement, if I start to write the word supplementary, I could also add a little line here, and now that looks like it's an eight. So that's the 180. Whatever tricks are gonna help you to remember, just remember complementary are two angles that add to be 90, and supplementary are two angles that add to be 180. So let's go ahead and try an example of finding a pair of complementary and supplementary angles. And again, remember, they do not need to be adjacent. Now, on this one, for this picture that's right here, I can't just call anything just angle A because there's actually two angles here with vertex A. But for this one, I could call it angle S or use the three letters. So in order to find a pair of complementary angles, I am looking for two angles that when I add them, they add up to be uh, uh, 90 degrees. So if I go ahead and look here at angle CAB and then RST, let me go ahead and take those angle measures and let me add them. If I do 32 plus 58, that does give me 90. So to name the pair of complementary angles, I could either call this angle BAC, or I could reverse it and call it CAB, along with angle RST, or I could reverse it and call it TSR, or because there's only one angle sitting there at S, I could have called it angle S. So any, you would pick this one, and it could go with S, it could go with this, or this. You're gonna pick it with one of those, and then the same thing for the CAB. You can either pair it with the S, the RST, or the TSR. And those would be a pair of complementary angles. If on the test, and I ask you to only name one thing, and if you give me more than one answer, if your um, other answer is wrong, I'm gonna mark the whole thing wrong. Because I've had students in the past who were trying to, you know, they're not sure which one's right, and they put both just to think that they're gonna get some kind of credit. If you give me two answers and I only ask for one, and if one's wrong, you get the whole question wrong. So if I ask you for one thing, put that one answer that you are confident in. Don't give me more than that. Okay, next one, supplementary angles. This is where I'm looking for two angles that are gonna be adding up to be 180. So that was the ones that I outlined in black. So then here, for my supplements, I could take the 122 and add it with 58. Let me go ahead and do that math, make sure it adds to 180, and it does. So now I'm gonna either name for the supplements, I'm either gonna call it CAD, or I could also call it DAC. I can't call it angle A, because there's two angle A's there. And then I can match those with the same thing, angle S, angle RST, and angle TSR. So you can either match the CAD with this one, or this one, or this one, or the DAC if you reverse the letters with one of these. So we're looking for a pair. You don't have to list all of them if I only ask for one. Now the next one is asking for adjacent angles, and these are two angles that are next to each other. They need to share a common side and a common vertex. So my adjacent angles would be right here, and again, I can either call it DAC, or I could reverse it and call it CAD, and then I would match it with the other angle, and that would either be, let's see, BAC or CAB. So any combination. So the pair of adjacent could be these two, could be this and this, or this with this, or this and this. And again, you don't have to list all of them if I only ask for one. Let's try a real life example with example two, um, how it's tied to sports. Okay, 
So the next one, it says, when, re when viewed from the side, the frame of a ball return net forms a pair of supplementary angles with the ground. Find the measure of BCE. So let me go ahead and trace over it. So BCE is right here. It's this angle right here. And then ECD is right here. And notice it says it forms a pair of supplementary angles with the ground. So notice the ground here is a straight angle. So it's 180. So this is how it's going to tell me that they're supplements. So in this particular case, I'm not setting them equal to each other. I'm taking the expression for each. So BCE was 4x plus 8. ECD is x plus 2. I'm adding them and setting them equal to 180. So this is how you're going to be using your vocabulary knowledge of the terms and then applying it to your algebra skills by either a lot of times setting them equal to each other or adding them and setting them equal to a sum. So let's go ahead and combine our like terms. So I can add the 4x and the x, and that gives me 5x. And then the 8 plus 2 is 10. And then I'll set that equal to the 180. I now need to solve for x by subtracting 10. 5x equals 170. Divide by 5. And x equals 34. Now, the question did not ask for x. It asked me to find the measure of each angle. So to find the measure of angle BCE, BCE was the expression 4x plus 8. I'm going to take what x equals and plug it in. x is 34. I need to multiply. I get 136. I'm going to add 8, and I get 144. Now, to find the measure of angle ECD, I have two options here. I can either take its expression and plug in the 34, or I could have taken the 144 and subtract it from 180. But I'm just going to plug it in, and I get 36. So now, to confirm that I did do this correctly, I'm going to add 144 plus 36. If this does not add to 180, then I've done something wrong but it does. What you're gonna do here is plug it in, find X and then plug it back in. Next slide, we have some more vocabulary. All right, next one. So the next two terms are called linear pair and vertical angles. You will be using these a lot in proofs, okay? And throughout the course, and to help you find missing angle measures, um, maybe within triangles, or within quadrilaterals. This is all going to help us out. So a linear pair are going to be two adjacent angles when non-common sides are opposite rays. A linear pair always forms supplementary angles. So for example, if I trace over these, and I'm going to show you what it means by the non-common side. So if I trace over angle one, these are the rays that have formed it. Then if I trace over angle two, this is the rays that are forming it. Notice where I have below both red and blue here, and now it's green. Notice, and actually maybe I'll make it purple. So red and blue make purple. So where the two colors overlap, this is the common side where both it's red and blue. So the non-common side form the opposite rays. Notice this ray is pointing this way, and then the blue ray is pointing here. Notice this is a line. So these two angles are sitting on a straight line, and they're called a linear pair. For vertical angles, these are going to be two angles whose sides form two pairs of opposite rays. 
So again, if I trace over it, so here is angle four. And actually, let me do the red and the blue. So if I trace over the four, and then I trace over the five, notice that the sides, this is an opposite ray with this one, and then this one is pointing in this direction, and then this one and this. So these are opposite rays. Now a way that maybe might help you to recognize vertical angles, if you think about it, this is looking like it's spelling or it's creating a V. And then down here, you could make it into an A. So this would be vertical angles. And then if you flipped it, you also have vertical angles this way as well, this one with this one. So if you notice, it says three and six are vertical and four and five are vertical. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have two intersecting lines. And these two intersecting lines form vertical angles. So we would have one here with here. So these would be a pair of vertical angles. And then you would have another pair over here. What's gonna be coming up is we're gonna learn that vertical angles are congruent. Notice the congruency symbols I drew on that are indicating that those angles are congruent. So if I added numbers here, one, two, three, four, I would say that one and three and two and four are the vertical angles in this picture. And again, the numbers that are gonna be put into the pictures will change depending on each question. So now we're gonna tie this, these, this vocabulary into algebra. We're gonna translate this. So it says two angles form a linear pair. The measure of one angle is five times the measure of the other. Find the measure of each angle. So what we need to know here is that a linear pair, just like supplements, are gonna add up to be 180. So if I want to figure out, I'm gonna set this up algebraically, and let me go ahead and give myself a visual. So if I draw this, this could be my first angle, and then the other angle is five times that amount. So in order to solve this, what I'm gonna do is add x plus 5x equals 180. I'm gonna add my like terms, divide by six, and x equals 30. Now that's the first angle. The second angle, I'm gonna plug it in to the 5x. Take out the x, put in 30, and my second angle is 150. So the two angles will be 30 and 150. Because again, you can double check it by adding 30 plus 150. If it doesn't add up to be 180, you've done something wrong. So the next one, it says the measure of an angle is twice the measure of its complement. Find the measure of each angle. So let's look at an example without tackling this one yet. So let's say I give you a picture like this, and I gave you a little box here indicating that this is a right angle. And let's say I draw in a ray here, and I tell you that this angle is 40, and I ask you to find its complement. What would we do to find that complement? Beautiful, okay? So 90 minus 40, and then that would give us that x equals 50. We're gonna use this same thinking to solve this tie to algebra. So if, you, if it says the measure of an angle is twice the measure of its complement. Well, its complement is gonna be 
90 minus that angle. So x is the angle, and then the complement is going to be 90 minus it. So this would be the angle, x, and then its complement is going to be 90 minus x. So now here it says the measure of an angle is, so this will be x, the word is is the equal sign, and then twice the measure of its complement. Yes. Now, this is going to be the equation that I'm solving because I translated it as I read it. So it, here it says the measure of an angle, that's my x, the word is, is the equal sign, and then twice means times two, and then complement is this, and that's what I put here. Good. So now let me go ahead and write it down here so I have room to solve it. x equals 2 times 90 minus x. First thing I'm going to do is distribute 2 to the 90 and 2 to the x. This gives me 180 minus 2x. And then I still have the x equals. I now need to get my like terms together. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. 3x equals 180 divide by 3, and x equals 60. Now that's the angle to find its complement. Remember, we're doing 90 minus x, so 90 minus 60, and I get 30. So the two angles would be 30 and 60. And if you think about it, twice the measure of the complement, 2 times 30 is 60. You could just put that with the degree symbol. All right, then the next one is just reviewing what you can and cannot assume from a particular picture. So here, when we wanna interpret this diagram, so in this picture right here, some things that I can tell from it and things that I can't, so here, if I were to draw a plane around this, I could assume that all of these points are coplanar. I could also see that points A, B, and C are all collinear. They're all on the same line. I could also see that all of these, this, these two rays and this line all intersect at point B. I can also tell from this picture, I can also tell from this picture that this angle is adjacent to this one or that this angle is adjacent to this one. What I can't tell is I cannot assume that this one is a right angle unless it looks like the picture down here. I also can't assume that B is the midpoint of AC. I can't assume that these are congruent unless it has the markings. And then I also can't assume that this angle would be congruent to this unless they give me numbers or unless they have congruency marks. So bottom line, you can't assume anything unless it's told to you. All right, one last slide. So here it says, use the diagram to solve for the indicated angle measures. So notice this is a straight line. Again, this is the only thing you can assume is when you have a straight line. So this tells me that these are a linear pair, which also makes them supplements. So I'm going to be adding 3x minus 6 plus 2x plus 16 and set that equal to 180. I'm going to combine my like terms, combine these, subtract 10, 5x equals 170, divide by 5, x equals 34, and now it only asks me to find the measure of EFH. EFH is this angle right here, so I'm going to take the 3x minus 6, plug in 34, 
and I get 102, subtract 6, and that angle measure is 96. Now, if it asked me to find the other one, I would plug it in there as well, or I could just subtract from 180. Now, to find ABC, notice the little right angle mark here. So this tells me that these are complementary. So I'm going to add x plus 9 plus 2x and set it equal to 90. Add my like terms. 3x plus 9 equals 90. Subtract 9. 3x equals 81, divide by 3, and x equals 27. Now, it didn't ask me to find x. It wants ABC, which is this little angle here. So now I'm going to take 27, plug it into the x plus 9, 27 plus 9, and I get 36 degrees. So this angle would be 36 if it asked me to find the other one, I could plug it in uh, 2 times 27, and this would be 54. And again, you can confirm that you did it right by adding the 2, and if it doesn't add up to be 90, then you've done something wrong. And that is it for the very last lesson of Chapter 1.